Good morning. It is 8.31 in Atlanta. We have co-hosts. Yes, we have co-hosts. If you don't know me, hi, hello, my name is Maya and I am your host of Motivation and Muscles with Maya Ting. We have co-hosts, just some coffee. I've mentioned this before, I love Colombian coffee. We do the K-Pods over here and I do just a little bit of less than a capful of a skinny syrup. I think it's gingerbread latte. I mean, just a little bit. I do 10 ounces of coffee. And then I do about two tablespoons of a non-dairy powder creamer. And that's co-host. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so that's, I'm almost at the end of it. I've already made my smoothie. Um, and that's in the refrigerator because once I'm done here, I'm going to go upstairs, put some workout clothes on, and the spin bike is calling my name. Um, I try to spin for at least 30 minutes every morning. This is a part of my new routine. This afternoon, I will be going back to the gym. We're going to hit legs. And um, yeah, because tomorrow, my daughter and I have to get on the road and travel to Athens for a work conference. So yeah, it's lots to do, not enough time. But anyway, so this morning, the word we're going to focus on is grief. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm. Mm. And to be honest, when we talk about the word grief, I really didn't understand what that word meant until 2019. December 9th, to be specific, I didn't understand because no one super close to me has ever passed away until my mom died. So when we think about this word grief, I don't just want to think about it in a manner of death. We can grieve. Okay, if you hear something in the background, it's my cats. You know, we got the thug cat, Chico, and then we have my emotional support kitty, Dooley Pop. They are running around this morning and I don't have carpet, I have hardwood floors. So they're just, okay, it's grief. So we're not gonna limit grief to just meaning uh, missing a loved one who has passed away. We can grieve the loss of a friendship. We can grieve the loss of a relationship period. We can grieve the loss of a pet, right, a job. Anything that we are no longer attached to <clears throat> and that we no longer have tangible access to, um, you have the potential of grieving that person, that thing, right? But the question is, how do we respond to grief? I know that there are about seven stages of grief. And from an educational perspective, I get it. Um, but I don't really subscribe to it. And let me explain to you why. Because there really is no order of operation when it comes to grief. Acceptance may not come until years from now. Um, you know, anger might come first before the acceptance or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I know that there is not an order of operations, but I think when we look at the seven stages of grief, in between, there are so many more adjectives that we could add in there that are not listed, if that makes any sense. And not to mention, your grief journey is so specific and unique to you. No one's grief journey looks the same. How do I know this? Not just because my mom passed away, but because four months after she passed away, I went back to school to become a grief educator. There's a reason why they say, do not do anything pertaining to grief or make any major life decisions after you experience a great loss um, because you're not acting in your right mind. They allowed me to do it, the University of Wisconsin. I did it, I did it anyway, it was online. A lot of it I don't remember until now four years later, <laughs> because your mind is just in a cluster. It's just, you know, but I felt it was important not to just understand my own grief in better detail, but to understand others because 
prior to my mom, I was very cynical about death. I was very cynical about the word grief because I had not experienced it. Um, now I'm a lot more tender, a lot more tender, a lot more forgiving, a lot more understanding, right? But the biggest takeaway is your grief journey looks different than anyone else's. It's just like a fingerprint, right? When we initially look at our fingers, we can't see the print, but there is a print that's identified just for you. And no one shares an identical fingerprint. Um, at the school I work for, I also do um, grief workshops for our students um, because there is a such thing as being stuck, right? And I'm just here for one of my many jobs is to just really work with the students to not be stuck. I don't unstuck them, if that's even a word. I don't unstick them. You know, I offer hope. I offer resources um, so they can get themselves out of the state of being stuck. It is not my job to pick them up and to you know, move them along the journey, their journey of grief. It's not my job. Um, I'm the hope dealer, though, if that makes any sense. Um, and to help them to make sense of it. And the reason why I take this approach of not doing it for them, and sometimes, a lot of the times, actually, I don't give them the answers. I allow them to figure it out because there's going to be an after Maya Okay, because normally my courses are about eight weeks. There's an after Maya. And how do you help yourself when there is no Maya? I want them, my students, to learn how to have a valley moment and to still function, to still move. So with that being said, we're talking about the word grief today. Another quick short story, here in Atlanta, there was a knucklehead running around the city of Hampton, Georgia, and he shot and killed four people. We still don't know the why behind it. Hampton is about 15, 20 minutes from me, and four people lost their lives um, and didn't have to, all because this man was unhinged. One of the people who was tragically and brutally murdered was a good friend who I went to church with. This is a man that any time you saw him, he had a smile on his face. This was a jolly person. For us who knew him, it's a shock, but to God, it's not. Like in reference to your loss, it might be a shock to you, but it was never a shock to God. What is that cat doing? Hold on. I do apologize, you guys. That that cat, Chico, is just, I just love him. Anyway, so he was newly married. He's only been married for, I think, four years to another lady at our church. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so what can we do? How can I help you? How can you help me? How can we help people who are grieving? Number one, we can just be present. Be present. Just be present to love on them. And love them beyond the funeral. Love them beyond when there's no more casseroles. Love them beyond when the nights get really lonely. Love them beyond. 
Number two, stop trying to fill in the silence. Stop. So say if me and you are, you know, you're grieving and I'm, I'm here and we get, we're talking and then we get quiet. That's okay. There's power in the silence. There's reflection in the silence. There's peace in the silence. There's reconciliation in the silence. And as humans, we don't like the silence. So we fill it with mindless, endless conversation that doesn't help, wasn't needed, is silly. And my husband, I think I shared this with you guys, my husband struggles with that and I do too because again, when we first get into the car, what do we do? We turn the radio all the way up. When we first buy a car, before we kick in the tires to make sure the tires are good, before we open up that hood to look at the engine that's been cleaned, okay? Before we do any of that, we turn the car on and we wanna hear the radio because the fact of the matter is we don't like silence. Silence is very awkward until you understand that there's purpose in the silence. There's intentionality in the silence. There's, there's, there's peace in the silence. And I'm learning that. So, I don't know what you're grieving. I don't know what aches your heart. But this is what I do know in my devotion. Tomorrow is not promised. So what does that mean? We need to act like it. So we need to live today as if we won't be here tomorrow. And that includes not just self-care, but understanding and recognizing that other people are in need as well. And it's our job to comfort them, to be present with them, to, to love on them. That's another reason why I've started this channel. Not just because I wanna you know, document, you know, my thoughts and feelings and my, you know, uh, transformation body journey. I mean, that's a part of it too. But a big part is I love connecting with people. Yeah. Yeah, so. I know... There is a scripture, James 4.14 says, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? Is it even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away? To the next second, two hours from now is not promised. So how are we responding to grief? How are we responding to people? Because let me explain something to you. There is no grief in heaven. It's nothing but extreme amounts of joy and gratefulness. And that's something we can have here on earth. So knowing that tomorrow is not promised, we have been given an opportunity to be better humans today. And again, not just for self but for others. But I will say this, when you change, <clears throat> when you change self, change that mindset, get rid of those nasty, dirty neural paths that you have created in your brain, get rid of them and replace them with good neural pathways in your brain and mindsets begin to change. Let me tell you what happens. People around you begin to change. Either they'll stick around and embrace your change and they too will change or they'll fall off. They'll fall off. So. Hebrews 9.27 says, And 
it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Hmm. The commentator says, with this in mind, I encourage you to live with an urgency. Time is ticking. Sooner or later, either you will stand before the Lord in an instant or he will return to take his church away. Either way, time is ticking. And it is. We don't have time to be sitting around and just, you know, uh, being silly. People are in need. And it ain't about you. It's not about me. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's just stop and be mindful. Clear your brain. Clear your mind. You know, I try to get these videos out between 9 and 9.30. If I can before, that's a blessing. And it might be late in the day for some of you guys. But for me, it's, you know. But um, let this be an opportunity to just clear your mind. Clear your plate. Let's reset and let's hit the ground running. And understand that there are people hurting. And ask yourself, how can I be of assistance to people? You don't have to physically be present. You can send them a text or call them on the phone. Especially after COVID, everybody is suffering in one way or another. It's so prevalent that you can go to the Walmart or to the Kroger or to Publix and look at people in their eyes and you can see the pain. I am intentional and I'm going to, you know, wrap this up, but I am very intentional when I go out to encourage people. So if I see a, a young lady or a woman or somebody walking past me and they have the resting itch face and you know what I'm talking about? I like to say, smile, you're beautiful. Or I'll say, oh, your hair is bussing. I love it. Or, oh, girl, where you get those shoes from? I try to find something to compliment somebody on. Because the world beats you down so much. The world. And you never know what somebody is going through. Yeah. Grief. Let's deal with it and stop running away from it because there's nothing that we can do to run away from it. It's here. So let's think on and meditate on grief. Let's go.
and that's five minutes. Yeah. So, iron sharpens iron. I am here. I don't know you personally, but just know I pray for every last one of you. I love you. Let's be intentional about life. And let's live life not according to the world. Because that'll bring you nothing but an early death. Let's be clear, right? Don't I know it? I may not understand your grief because your grief looks different than mine. But I can virtually hold your hand and let you know that you are not alone. And I love you. And there is just nothing you can do about that. I will talk to you later because later on we have our um, exercise challenge. The rep count has gone up to 25. So I'm going to go ahead and do my spin and maybe around noon, I'll go ahead and record that for you guys. And yeah, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I love you so, so much. Have a blessed one.